Hi everyone, so I thought I'd make a quick video to talk you through a paper idea for your final project. Uh, it's a really cool process and I really love this idea. So I'm going to walk you through the idea how IT flattens organizations and our world today globally. And how I'm going to do this, I'm going to use Home Depot. It's one of my favorite places to talk about. I love going to Home Depot and looking and buying and, and doing things. And all their employees are so excited because they all have knowledge areas. If you think about the history of Home Depot a little bit, they were one of the first to use RFID chipping and real-time and supply chain management. How did they do this? Well, first they started using handheld scanners to go around and had their employees checking the shelves. If you bought a two by four, 10 of them, they'd scan them and it would recognize in the system and their supply chain that they need to reorder right now and supply back 10 two by fours or a bag of cement. Every time it was calculated, they had that. They would go to the shelves and they check daily. Okay, 10 were bought, they put it out. It shifted to, well, let's go to the owl and help when people are buying. We'll scan everything and check them out. So we kind of started flattening by losing, you got it, tellers at the shelves to check out because everybody had a gun and could check you out at any time. You'd be done ready to go and in real time every two by four, every bag of cement, every brick, whatever you took was back to the central data mart because they had autonomous buildings and by autonomous my means that every single Home Depot is on its own. It gets a master list down from the entire data system that Home Depot as a general mothership sends out, but each system's on its own. So if there's a hurricane, let's say over in Savannah, and our system goes down, the entire system doesn't go down around the country. Only the autonomous system goes down, and when it comes back up, it instantly sets up as data. And reverse, if there's price shifts that are instituted on the universal side for the mothership, everyone gets them in real time. That's right, you can be buying a two by four, but the hurricane down here caused shipping to stop a two by fours up north if you're buying them. And in real time, that data change will raise the cost of your two by four, crazy. If you're down as soon as the stores come up, it automatically sets that back up inside of there. So this whole supply chain management really started developing the way we purchase and buy things and the way things change and how fast supply chain happens at Home Depot. This autonomous idea never caused any problems with the whole company because once it happened, nothing stopped, only the one store stopped, and when it was back online, it was ready to go, and everything was in real time, still activated, and shipping came in for what supplies they needed or what was missing. It retroactivated right away. It's pretty neat about the restocking idea. The checkout system changed too, if you think about it, because they said, well, we're wasting manpower to where this guy could be putting stuff on the shelf or this woman could be putting stuff on the shelf for potting plants or they could be doing more because we're wasting so much with people checking out in real time. Why don't we just get rid of the checkouts and they put in? You got it, one of the first self-checkout systems to where I go up and I check my own two by fours out and I charge myself and go out the door. And all that data is captured back to the supply chain and says, well, Scott came in and he bought 10 two by fours, a bag of cement, nails, screws, this and that. Well, we need to ship more to this store because they're almost out because the inventory is going. So in real time, I'm doing supply chain management for them. Interesting, huh? A lot of companies started picking up on this idea. Can you think of one? How about Walmart? Think about Walmart. You walk into Walmart today, there's 30 registers and none of them but one's open. <laughs> Usually that's the one selling the cigarettes or something like that to where they have to have somebody there to check your IDs for. But even that's out there today to where you'll go boom, 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 you can't buy anything until someone comes over and swipes and checks your ID and there's one person working 15 individual stalls. Crazy. But they have reduced and flattened down their whole entire workforce through this. And they've put more people back on the shelves. Same thing goes at Walmart to where you buy a sweeper when you check it out they send another one to the store so it's always full. Crazy but really neat. IT's flattening. So this idea of a paper we can show through technology how this just flattened the use of a store clerk and changed the jobs but more importantly how it changed the whole industry and supply change management. 
How does this go in a closing? Well, if you think about it, IT flattened and lost a lot of jobs, but it also created a lot more. For every job that's lost, you have to have more programmers, more people making sure all this stuff is working, more people doing data entry. So the world is changing on that idea, increasing jobs as it's decreasing other older jobs and changing. Creating new innovations are constantly adapting to, and they're hiring people just to innovate and think of ways to change it. This all goes into your idea of your paper that you might want to do in the closing. Where's the world going to be tomorrow? Well, we already know with Amazon that so much is being bought online that I think a, there's not going to be any box stores left. You're going to pull up to a warehouse and you're going to scan just like we have a QR code or your code that they give you and someone will bring out or a robot because someone's programming the robots to bring out your order that's already there and they'll load it in your car or dump it in your truck or whatever happens. The world's really changing the way we get this stuff and the way we share and the way IT is flattening everything, but again, increasing. Every time there's a new robot, someone's got to program the robot. Someone's got to maintain the robot. Someone's got to update the skills. Someone's got to update the data the robot picks at the Amazon warehouses. Tons of new jobs. But our jobs are growing, gang, so you're in a great field. The paper kind of gets you to think about this. How historically, I hope, that you can pick something, an organization has changed and how it's growing and how it's adapting. I want you guys to think a little bit deeper. I use the idea of how IT is flattening in supply chain management. From, oh, we went to someone writing down, saying we need three, there was two bought, you know, there's one left, I gotta order a couple more to real-time scanning of stuff on the shelves, to real-time active scanning of, of people buying the stuff, to the register, to no more people working the register, but I'm the register clerk and the shopper and the client, and I'm also the supply chain manager. Wait a minute, they should be paying me. Gang, I hope you enjoyed this little conversation, and I'll talk to you soon. I'm looking forward to some awesome papers from your teams this semester. Use any resources out there. Check out websites like Kia Sears and their whole philosophy on management and how they break down procurement and everything. They're awesome at that and sharing information. I'm looking forward to everything, gang. Have a great day.
So if you guys notice that I kind of changed my view a little bit on the camera. And what I did was just fill this whole screen in with our Ultra. I really haven't changed too much, but if you'll notice the lighting on me has changed. Ah, oh gee, darn, right? So maybe what I should do is just real quick, move my lights just a little bit. And I'm gonna use that inverse square roll because I already know because I cheated and I have it kind of pre-measured out to where I kind of gotta be just to bring that light in a little bit better on me. And I can see real nice now, and you guys can see me pretty good. I'll pull this one in, you can't see them, or outside the camera frames. And I'll light myself just so I'm a little bit better. Now you should be able to see me really well. The light's kind of neutral. Our background's just a little bit warmer still with our ultra key. I'm fitting totally inside of our frame. And pretty soon, I'm gonna make it all disappear and I'll be in the matrix. I'll drop out and I will look incredible. This is something you can do just for your clients. And as you're talking, just like they do in television and movies, they'll actually add in video or photos and stills to talk about them. And they can shrink them down and put them in little corner dead areas of the green screen if they want, or the whole background. We're gonna do just a piece on a clip that I bought from Shutterstock. We'll drop it in because it's pretty cool of text and code flying around. So it looks like I'm in the matrix. So you'll see that pop up inside of this video itself. And you'll actually see how I drop that in. So I'm gonna do that pretty quick and we'll start doing it probably about now, hey gang, I'm in the matrix. Can you believe this? Incredible. So if you watch the video, you'll see what I'm doing and I'll show you how to cut that in and it'll be pretty wild overall. So I'm gonna talk about this and you're gonna hear me talk about it in the video. It's gonna be pretty neat. So the gang, this is kind of a really cool trick you can do to drop in, really enhance your videos, your education, to add an extra element even if it's outside and you want to do something stormy, if you take a picture like I did before the campus, I can drop myself in so it looks like a sunny day. I lit myself so it looks nice on purpose, just so it's like a sunny day the same way. And I can put myself in that element. I'll probably show you one of those tricks here too. Thanks guys. Uh, I'm going to show you a little bit more and you'll hear more on the video side. It's coming up soon. We'll talk again soon. Thanks.